Please be seated. Good morning, church. Happy Mama's Day. Amen. Uh, we're still uh, in Philippians. If you have your Bible, you certainly can uh, turn over there. Uh, inside your uh, worship folder is a, a brief outline of the message and also uh, the scripture verses that we're going to be using there. Uh, in honor of mothers today, um, I'm going to uh, pass along some great wisdom to you. Now, uh, I'll be honest, these did not come from my mother. Uh, these came from Will Rogers, but uh, it's in the same vein of wisdom on Mother's Day. Okay, So in honor of all you moms, here's, uh, here's just some good wisdom that, that we as your uh, offspring have picked up from time to time. No, number one here, um, Will Rogers said, don't squat while you have your spurs on. Just great words of wisdom. Uh, okay? Uh, another one um, that Will said was, uh, letting the cat out of the bag is a whole lot easier than putting it back in the bag. <laughs> Amen? Y'all that have cats. Um, if you get to thinking that you're a person of some influence, try ordering someone else's dog around. <laughs> You'll kind of realize where you are on the pecking order. Um, here, here's another, again, one of his sayings. He said, um, after eating an entire bull, a mountain lion felt so good that he started roaring. And he kept it up until a hunter came along and shot him. And obviously the moral of this saying is that when you're full of bull, you need to keep your mouth shut. <laughs> that's, great, that's great wisdom there. Uh, here's another one. Some of y'all will get this. Uh, never kick a cow chip on a hot day. Um, two theories to arguing with a woman, and neither one of them works. Remember that, guys, okay? Um, if you find yourself in a hole, the first thing to do is to stop digging. I mean, obviously, that, that's great words of wisdom. Uh, here's another one. Never slap a man who's chewing tobacco. <laughs> another great word of wisdom there. Um, one of the ones, again, most of you all will get, always drink upstream from the herd. Okay? And last but not least, again, some of you all, this is a pretty common one. Uh, will Rogers, uh, the quickest way to double your money is to fold it over and put it back in your pocket best way to double your money. So just some, and again, that, that has nothing to do with anything. It's just an illustration that you have, and the only place to do it is before the sermon, okay? So <laughs> I'll just be honest with you. Um, I want to uh, welcome you all today, but welcome my family. My 91-year-old uh, mom is here. Uh, my wife is here. My four kids are here. So uh, one, of those, one of those rare days that we all get together. And uh, it's uh, fun to be family, isn't it? Fun to have family. We're in Philippians chapter 2 as we continue on our uh, sermon series in Philippians. And you'll notice the, uh, the title of the message today is Don't Be a Spiritual Couch Potato. And uh, if there's one thing I know our, our mothers uh, did for us when we were young was to try to get us off the couch to get us out the door, to get us active, to get us moving, to get us productive, if you will. So in that vein, that's kind of where we're going to go today, is what is, what is God asking us to, to, if you will, get back in the game, to, to, to get back in the idea that I'm, I'm living out my, my Christian faith to those around me. So as I read God's word, I'm going to ask you to stand in honor of that reading. Again, you can follow on the screen. You can follow there in your notes. Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 12. And scripture says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue 
to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. And do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a crooked, crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like the stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all so you too should be glad and rejoice with me. Father, we thank you for your word. And fathers, we look into the principles today. Father, I pray that you would speak individually to everybody that's here. Father, this just wouldn't be an exercise on Sunday morning that we go through. But uh, Father, I pray that each person here would have a fresh encounter with you today. Change us today. We ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you all. You may be seated. So Paul, again, in, in this passage, there's, again, nothing rocket science in here, but uh, I think there's some clear principles that we can grab onto as, as 21st century Christians that clearly he was trying to express to the Philippian church uh, some 2,000-ish years ago. And uh, this, this first idea is um, Paul gives this command to exercise our faith. To demonstrate our faith. Notice, notice here, he, he says, we are to work out our salvation. So that's the first blank in your notes. We're to work out our salvation. Again, the latter part of verse 12, notice he says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, he says, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, there, there has been some... Uh, some theologians that have taken this idea of working out your salvation to, uh, to support their understanding of a, uh, of a we have to do something to earn salvation. But the, the text is very clear here. The text is merely saying this idea to work out, to exercise, to demonstrate, to give evidence of your salvation is what Paul is telling us here. So, so for us, in, a, in our context today, it's instead of resting on what we've done in the past, it's an idea, you'll notice the NIV specifically translates this idea as continue to work out your salvation. Continue today in the present, not, not so much saying, well, I've, I've already done something in the past, but now today, remember that I need to continue to demonstrate that this, this salvation that I have received within me is supposed to be active and evident and, uh, and, and an idea that is, that is going out to those people around me. Now, for, again, for many of us, we like the phrase, as we have always obeyed. We can look back on our life and say, well, I can remember 30 years ago when I, I, I demonstrated my faith. I, I can look back and 15 years ago, I can remember God very clearly using me in that. But, you know, today I'm kind of a little tired, I'm busy, the kids are just consuming my whole life, and I, I just don't have the time, the energy, uh, the, the resources, the motivation See, that, that's where we get in trouble because this idea is today-centered. Not, not so much on the past, not discounting what, what we've done through God in the past, but today, what is God asking of you to demonstrate your faith? Now, I, I think in a lot of ways, this faith that we have received... For by grace you have been saved through faith. This, this faith that we have received, appropriated, needs to be a transforming grace and faith in our life. It needs to transform us personally. 
There's probably some areas in my life today, I know there are, that I still need to work on instead of saying, well, I, I've, I've fixed some areas in the past. There's probably some things today that I still need to work on. I still need to give evidence that that faith that is in me is transforming my life. It's, it's not only maybe transforming me personally, but it's transforming my relationships around me. Maybe even transforming my career that I, that I have adopted and that, that, I, that I'm pursuing at this point. How is God's salvation in your life being demonstrated in a tangible way to those around you? I believe, above everything else, this working out of our salvation is to act like Christ followers to those people around us. To be different. See, everybody can go along. Everybody can just be part of the herd. But it's somebody that is different. The folks are going to notice this idea that they are demonstrating they are working out their salvation the second idea not only are we to work out our salvation but we're to recognize where our strength comes from and again scripture clearly tells us here in verse 13 that it is God who is at work in you now again we we can look back there and recognize our accomplishments but if we're honest with ourselves, it is God who was working in us back then. But not only back then, but it is God who works in you today. God is the one that should be encouraging and pressing upon you this intentionality of working out, of demonstrating my faith to those people around me. See, success is from Him. It certainly is not from us. He provides the motivation. He provides the, the direction, the movement. Folks, it is about Him. It is not about us. For many of us, we can, again, look and say, well, I, I can do that. That's within my ability to do that. Folks, the, the real reason behind you doing it is because God has enabled you to do that. God gives you those talents and gifts and personality. God gives you those resources, those ideas, those goals, those, those gifts that he wants you to keep pushing out and, and demonstrating, working out your salvation. Uh, years ago, there was a Bible study that came out by Henry Blackaby called Experiencing God. And it's certainly not as popular now. It is in some circles, but not nearly as popular now as it was 15, uh, 20, 25 years ago when it, when it came out. And I, I had the ability, the privilege to be able to lead that uh, in, in several different settings. One phrase that, that I can remember over and over again that Dr. Blackaby said in that Bible study is to find out where God is working and join Him in His work. Find out where He's working. A real brief little example. When, again, I, I was uh, pastoring down in Baton Rouge at a church, and um, we, we hit on an idea because we kind of, we watched who was, who was coming to our church, who the guests were that were coming to our church. And we noticed over a, over a fairly significant period of time that we were seeing an inordinate amount of women with children coming to our church. Now, they weren't single women, but they were women that the husbands weren't coming with them. And we had a, a lady in our church that God put in the middle of our congregation, and she, she was part of kind of our strategic leadership thinking team. And she said, you, you know what, I, I'd like to start a Mother's Day Out program. And we said, why? She said, look at all the, 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 the women that are bringing children here, young, preschool kids. If we could provide them maybe a day a week where they could come and drop their kids off and they could go do their thing. And, and we developed that, and it was really amazing. That became our front door for our church. We had, we had literally tens 
of families that were, that were coming in and dropping their kids off. And then through a series of events, we would have kind of the Mother's Day out evening like we do with BBS or, um, you know, any type of... And the dads would come then. And then we'd be able to share the faith and we were seeing... We were seeing family after family after family that was being impacted because of this one little thing of seeing where God was working and joining him in that avenue. I, I don't know where God's working in your life. But I do know that if I don't have my spiritual eyes and ears open, if I'm not willing to live out, to work out my salvation, I'm probably going to miss those, those places that God is working. My encouragement for us is to get off the couch. Get back in the game. And see where God is working and join Him in that avenue. Second thing in this text in Philippians chapter 2 is Paul gives us this command to rejoice. This idea of saying that we're going to rejoice in what God is doing. So first thing, we need to trust God in everything. In everything, trust God. God, notice the text here, do everything without complaining or arguing. Do everything. So, again, I, I have found in my life when I usually complain, when I usually argue, it's because I'm not trusting God in that situation. I, I've, I've moved to selfishness, and it's now either an inconvenience or, or it's a situation where I don't like, where it's not what I would choose and I tend then, instead of, of trusting God, who is at work in me, instead of trusting Him, I default to complaining and arguing. You all never do that, I'm sure. Never. We, we, just, we just kind of flip a switch. Now see, I'm a Christ follower, but I flip a switch. Instead of trusting God, I complain about my situation. I, I complain about the, the, the lot in life that I've been dealt at that moment. I, I think I've mentioned before, um, usually when I'm having a bad day, my goal is to take as many people down with me as I can. I mean, that, I, you know, I'll just be honest with you. I don't, if I'm having a bad, I don't want to go down by myself. I want other folks to enjoy my misery and my my lot in life. And it's those times that I, I default to not trusting God, I default to complaining and arguing about it. And folks, we can do that at the drop of a hat. We can move from trust to complaint and sometimes not even know that we've moved. Folks, when we get in the car, we can complain about anything, especially those idiotic people that are in those other cars out there. We can complain about the stoplights that stop us. I mean, we, we can complain about anything. We can complain about the weather. Gee, it's too wet, it's too... I mean, today, Mother's Day, last two years have been snowing. We're complaining about it. We complain about our bosses. Complain about our kids. I, we can complain about the candidates running for president. Are you kidding me? And we can complain with the best of them. And we can complain about the government that's going to end up and the taxes that were charged and you know, the, the decisions that are made and the Supreme Court. And we, at a drop of a hat, we can complain and argue. And Paul is saying here that what I want you to do instead is to trust God. Demonstrate your faith to those around you by working out your salvation. Folks, when I get around somebody who's a, who's a habitual complainer and arguer, you, you know, my default is to leave. Because I don't like to hang around that person. Now, I know sometimes I am that person. 
But when I can recognize that in somebody else, I don't want to hang around with a complainer and arguer. I, I want to see somebody that's different. Somebody that's transformed by the grace of God. Notice Paul not only tells us that we need to stop complaining, but he gives us the reasons why. They're just too quick. Number one is to complete our character. Notice he says you're, you're to not complain and argue so that you become blameless and pure. Your character is going to be changed. If we trust God, our character will shift from this perverse and crooked generation that we live in and our character will be transformed to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. A, a second natural reason why we should trust God is, is to become shining lights to those around us. Notice the text says here that, that, that we need to shine like lights to those. We need to, again, back to this first thing of to, to live out, to work out my salvation. Folks, I need to be different. I am supposed to be different. I need to trust God. Last thing in the text, I also need to rejoice in everything. Not only trust God in everything, but to rejoice in everything. Again, I, I'm not the sharpest pen in the little cup holder, but uh, everything means everything to me. It doesn't sound like there's a lot of wiggle room in there. You remember where Paul is at when he's writing this letter. He's in prison, not knowing today or tomorrow whether he will live or die. Suffering. The, the text says he's being poured out like a sacrifice and a, and a drink offering, suffering for the name of Christ in his own life. But notice what he said. Even though that is my lot in life, I didn't choose it, I didn't want it, but even though that is where my life is headed, notice he says, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. Even in those circumstances, I can stop and I can rejoice in everything. Today, Mother's Day, we can rejoice in a lot of things. We can trust God in a lot of things. Folks, do you realize regardless of the outcome of the election, God is still going to be in control? you all realize that? Huh? Regardless of the policies that are put into place, God is still going to be sitting on his throne. The almighty God of the universe is the same one that sent Jesus Christ to this earth to live, to die, to raise from the grave so that I might have salvation. Let me encourage you to work it out, to demonstrate it to those people around you, to be a light, to shine, and to rejoice and trust in God in everything. Allie mentioned uh, earlier today that uh, on your little bulletin there's a little tear off portion if you're a, a guest with us you can take and fill that out and give it but maybe today you as a member there's a little section down there for prayer needs maybe you as a member today God has spoken to you during this message and I know the staff prays for every one of those requests that come through the office. And maybe you just need to write a little prayer there. An issue that God is, is instructing you that you need to work out and demonstrate more effectively your salvation. To rejoice more. To argue less. During this time of commitment, again, just going to ask you, just do one thing and just do what God's asking you to do. The steps are open to pray. Allie and Bill will be down here in the front. Let's pray. Father, we, uh, we give you this time joyfully. Father, we ask that you'd change us. Father, we ask that you'd shape us to those people that are shining lights on the hill, making an impact and a difference in people's lives around us. Father, we rejoice in the salvation that you've given us. 
And Father, today, we rejoice in what's going on in our life as well. Refusing to complain, refusing to argue. Father, trusting you. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. We ask these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Would you all stand, Foster? Would you lead us? We are travelers on a journey along the road. We are here to help each other walk the mile and bear the load. I will hold the Christ light for you in the night time of your fear. I will hold my hand out to you, speak the peace you long to hear. Sister, let me be a servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Brother, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through when we sing to god in heaven we shall find such harmony born of all we've known together of christ's love and agony let's sing verse two Sister, let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. Heavenly Fathers, we come to you now. We come with grateful hearts, thankful for the time of worship that we join in together. Thankful for the word that has been shared with us. Father, I pray that we would take it with us today and allow it to work in our hearts and lives and change us and make us what you want us to be. We thank you for this place, this facility, and all the programming that takes place here. And we realize, Father, that our offerings help to meet these needs. And so I pray that we would be faithful today and generous in our giving and that you would use these gifts to carry out your kingdom's work here at home and around the world. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Then he 
He did. 